Quarles. Uh, thank you, Chairman <coughs> Crapo, Ranking Member Brown, members of the committee. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to testify on the Federal Reserve's implementation of the Economic Growth, Regulatory Relief, and Consumer Protection Act. Uh, the Act calls on the federal banking agencies to aid in promoting economic growth by further tailoring uh, uh, regulation to better reflect the character of the different banking firms that we supervise and recognizes that banks have a variety of risk profiles and business models. I believe that our regulation and supervisory programs can be flexible enough to accommodate this variety. The Federal Reserve's implementation of the Act's directives is underway. In my testimony today, I'll describe the progress we've made to date on tasks set out for the Federal Reserve and the Act. I will also highlight the work that will be our top priorities in the next few months. Turning first to the progress that we've made to date, among the Act's key provisions are targeted tailoring measures to reduce the regulatory burden on community banks. To provide clarity to the public, the board and the federal banking agencies in July issued public statements on the regulations and associated reporting requirements that the Act immediately affected, indicating that we would give immediate effect to those provisions even before the formal regulatory changes were fully implemented. And in August, the board began implementing these and other aspects of the law with several interim final rules. One interim final rule raised the asset threshold from $1 billion to $3 billion for bank holding companies, or BHCs, to qualify for what's known as a small BAC policy statement. The rule renders most BACs and savings and loan holding companies with less than $3 billion in assets exempt from the board's regulatory capital rules and provides corresponding relief from comprehensive consolidated financial regulatory reforms. Another interim final rule expanded the eligibility for small firms to undergo 18-month examination cycles rather than an annual cycle from less than a billion to $3 billion. In addition, the task of developing a community bank leverage ratio is a high priority for the board and our fellow regulators, and our goal is to issue a regulatory proposal in the very near future. Turning to larger firms, the board has placed our highest priority on issuing a proposed rule on tailoring enhanced credential standards for banking firms with assets between $100 billion and $250 billion. Our task is not merely to reform the current regulation of the particular institutions that are affected by the Act at this moment, but to develop a framework that will describe in a principled way when future institutions may expect enhanced regulation and why, using objective measures that account for the relative complexity and interconnectedness among large banks. While the statute sets an 18-month deadline for this regulatory process, we expect to move much more quickly than this. Topics covered by such a proposal could include, among other things, capital and liquidity rules, resolution planning requirements uh, for the less complex and interconnected of these firms. The statute requires periodic supervisory stress testing by the Federal Reserve, which I believe recognizes the value of stress testing but requires a more tailored frequency and requires us to think more carefully about the burden of these tests. Beyond thinking about how we will further tailor our regulation and supervisory programs for firms with assets between $100 and $250 billion, the board is similarly reviewing our requirements for firms with more than $250 billion in total assets but below the GCIN threshold. Through this review, the board aims to ensure that our regulations continue to appropriately increase in stringency with the risk profiles of firms, consistent with the Act and the board's excellent focus on tailoring. Currently, some aspects of our regulatory regime, liquidity regulation, for example, treat banks with more than $250 billion in assets with the same stringency as GSIMs. I see reason to apply a clear differentiation. Let me conclude by saying that the provisions I've highlighted in my delivered remarks focus on tasks that the board has completed or made a priority for the near term. In my written testimony and its appendix, you can find a more fulsome list with additional important tasks and the board's latest thinking and actions on them. Implementing the Act is an important milestone in the Federal Reserve's continuing tailoring mandate. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify before you this morning. I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Mr. Forbes.